Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are exploring the use of dark colors of cardstock for card backgrounds to make your card elements pop. I filmed this video a long time ago and I meant to edit it a long time ago, but I got busy, then I went on vacation, then the products were sold out, so I never got to it. So I'm just doing this now, I'm just editing this video now. The products are back in stock and I hope you'll enjoy this video. So I have four card examples for you, all created using a new BB's Hummingbird collection products from my friend BB Cameron in collaboration with Spellbinders. This is BB's second collection with Spellbinders and it is just as spectacular as the first one, BB's Butterflies. I did do a video with BB's Butterflies. It was also super late. It was like a year late. Um, so yeah, you can check that video out. And BB has a new collection coming in August, in a couple of days. It is called BB Snowflakes, and it is just as beautiful. But that is a Christmas collection, while this one is an evergreen all year round uh, release. Now, dark backgrounds are a wonderful way to draw the eye of the viewer to the focal point of your card project and help it pop. I love using dark backgrounds everywhere. I love, um, you know, either dark accents or dark backgrounds and home decor. And I kind of try to bring that into my card making life. Now, when you have a dark background, all other colors instantly become much brighter and much more vivid when placed against that dark background. Now, dark background doesn't automatically mean black. No, Although black is a great color to use and I have made many cards with a black background, you can just as easily use dark blue, dark purple, dark teal, and you know, whatever other dark shade of cardstock you have in your stash or that you can blend because you don't necessarily need to use dark color of cardstock. You can create um, the dark color by using inks if you like to do ink blending. Now I started working on my cards by creating several hummingbirds using the absolutely brilliant hummingbird and lily die set. You can use any products you might have in your stash to create with dark backgrounds. I'm just uh, loving this collection so that's what I'm going with today. Now I first die cut a bunch of pieces from various colors of cardstock and I assembled one of the birds in flight. Notice the level of feather detail on these. Isn't that amazing? You know, all of the debossing makes this bird pop. Now, the size of the die cut is also fabulous. It is perfect for an A2 card, but of course, you can use it for bigger projects if you are into bigger cards. I personally prefer to make A2, so that's pretty much the size of the card that you will see on my YouTube channel. Now the bird is very easy to assemble. There are several pieces and you simply cut them out from various colors of cardstock. You can also cut them from white and you know, either ink blend each piece or you know, use your coloring medium like alcohol markers to have very cool color variations and blends. I've seen some amazing examples of these online and guys, they're just, they're just awesome. Now, I use the Spellbinders cardstock in several colors, Sunkissed, Tuscan, Persimmon, Pink Sand, Fruit Punch, and Wild Berry, and I simply mix the colors to create a bird. I made sure to use different colors for the wings, you know, to create color variations, layer up the tail pieces, and add a contrasting color piece to the belly of the bird. Now, I also used white for the bird's face and black for the beak. These are very easy to put together once you learn how to do it once. And once you do it, you won't be able to stop. You know, these are kind of super fun and addictive. You just want to put the birds, keep putting the birds together. I find that using a pickup tool such as a crystal katana or a similar tool is super helpful to, you know, pick up and position some of the little pieces as you assemble them. And some of the pieces are quite small. With my birds assembled, I used Barely Arts glue to glue the elements together and I moved on to working uh, on the backgrounds. For my first card, I did a combination of hot foil stamping and die cutting to create a sentiment. I foiled Wishing You a Birthday As, 
as you. The missing word is beautiful or wonderful, and it is a die cut. So, you know, you have options. So this sentiment is from my Anemone Blooms collection that released earlier this year in January. The word die cut is from the wonderful script sentiment die set, and the glimmer plates are from the Hello Friend glimmer plates set. And I absolutely love doing this sort of combination. The card stick I have here is the Spellbinders Indigo. It is a beautiful dark blue. I particularly love this color for card um, backgrounds as it makes everything pop. Simon Says Stamp also has a similar uh, cardstock. It's soft, similar color cardstock. It's called Soft Navy. It is also um, nice, dark blue and very beautiful. Here, I wanted to add a little bit of something extra, you know, some oomph, if you will. And so I did some basic ink blending around the edges. I used the Simon Says Stamp large ink blending brush and the darkest blue, blue ink pad that I could find in my stash. And this happened to be Galaxy Positively Saturated Ink from Simon. And so I ink blended a heavy layer of this dark blue around the edges of my panel, keeping the center of the panel free from blending. So keeping it lighter. This helped to darken the edges a little bit, not too much since I'm not using, you know, uh, since I am already using a dark color of cardstock, so I can go much darker here, but it did help. The ink blending will lighten up a bit as the ink dries. You'll see that it isn't as dramatic when I go to assemble the pieces. Now, I decided to combine the gorgeous hummingbirds with the beautiful flowers from the Spellbinders January Large Die of the Month Club Blooms. These are absolutely gorgeous flowers. They are still available, by the way, and anyone can purchase them. But I don't think they will be available for long. So if you still don't have these flower dyes, I highly recommend them. Uh, you will keep coming back to these, to these florals over and over again. So if you want this set, go ahead and grab it. These are very, very beautiful flowers. Of course, you can combine these hummingbirds with any other flowers you might have in your stash or, you know, some other greenery. I used foam adhesive squares, regular thickness for some of the flowers and then thin foam adhesive squares for other elements to create a scene here. So I have a sentiment. Next, I added a hummingbird and framed it in using the beautiful flowers and leaves. My idea was to create lush vegetation behind my hummingbird as if the bird is in a beautiful flowering forest. I added a small foam adhesive squares, a little apart, even behind the smallest buds to help and pop them up on my card. I love when things are lifted from the background, when there's space between the background and the element, as I find that adds interest to my card. You know, it's not flat, it's not boring, so I, I use a ton of foam adhesive. This, of course, does make it a little bit more difficult to mail your card, but since I either hand deliver my cards or I ship them with a small gift, I pack them. You know, I pack them with a small gift, so that's not really a problem for me. If you plan to ship your card, you maybe want to dial back a little bit on the amount of foam adhesive that you use or switch to the thinner foam adhesive squares. So here's a close-up of this card. Once finished, you can see how much more vivid the flowers look against the dark background. It is absolutely gorgeous. And by the way, I did not adhere the word wonderful completely. I only have the first part adhered and the loop of the letter A is adhered to the small yellow flower. Everything else is not attached. And then I use scissors and I trim the flowers that were going outside the edge of this card and I love it. I hope you love it too. Okay, moving on to the rest of the projects that I have for you today. Next, I went back to BB's dies and here I'm assembling the gorgeous lily flower. The size of this flower is amazing. I love how big it is. I love to use big bold elements on my cards and this die cut fits that description perfectly because you can just add one die cut 
and it takes a lot of space and it becomes the focal point of your card. Not quite, I'm not using it quite like that here. I am using it slightly differently and you'll see what I mean. I'm adding some ink blending to the yellow die cuts using yellow ink. This is the Simon Sestium Citrine Positively Saturated Ink and I'm using the Spellbinders Blending Brush for this. Now this is a smaller size brush compared to the Simon Sestium Large Blending Brushes which I love and use often. So the Spellbinders brush, it is smaller in size and it doesn't transfer that much ink onto your paper compared to the Simon Says Stamp brushes. I love to use this brush when I need to add ink to my die cuts, but not too much ink, you know, just a little bit. I can never overdo my ink blending when I'm using this brush. So that's what I like it for because sometimes I can pick up, pick up too much ink. I can come in really heavy handed and overdo it. With this brush, I never overdo it. So I'm also using the Sunbeam ink for the lighter yellow die cut. I'm blending this color of ink using the same brush. Now I did not clean the brush. I just went straight into that lighter ink pad. I don't have that much ink on the brush, so it doesn't bother me. It's not going to contaminate my ink pad or anything like that. And I also don't have a blending brush for every color of ink. I just have blending brushes for, you know, general colors, like a brush for yellow ink, a brush for pink ink, a brush for green ink, and so on. Now, I went back to the citrine color as that sunbeam wasn't giving me, you know, enough of a dark yellow that I needed here. So I ink blended all of the pieces and next I used the Barely Arts glue to assemble the two large lily pieces. Now, this flower is super easy to put together. I did need some instructions at first. I was kind of confused, but I looked on the website, you know, I looked at the finished project and I instantly figured out what goes where. So I used the glue to adhere the two large pieces and then I used a foam square for that single paddle as I needed to pop that up. And then I used glue for the black stamen in the center. Now this flower comes with a stem and leaves and you can add those if you want. I got these from the Spellbinders Pear Dot cardstock. Now you can also assemble a little bud and I love this. The bud is much smaller compared to the large lily and I love when I have flowers of various sizes as that makes it very easy to build backgrounds, you know, build composition, create arrangements. I love to have all of the various sizes. Okay, moving on. And here I have a dark green background. This is the Spellbinders Forest and it is sadly sold out at the moment. Actually, most of these dark colors of cardstock from Spellbinders are sold out. They are hopefully coming back in stock, but not anytime soon. So if you are looking for a similar color, that is why I'm mentioning the other brands that I know of that have similar colors of cardstock. And if you know a similar color from another brand, please feel free to mention it in the comments. So this is Forest Cardstock from Spellbinders. It is actually very similar to the Simon Says Stamp midnight green. So you can use that for this dark green background. Here I foiled have a wonderful day sentiment. It comes from the sealed glimmer sentiment set from Spellbinders. I love this set and I keep coming back to it over and over again. I, I just love the sentiments in here, you know. And I foiled this in matte gold foil, which is of course my favorite foil color. And you guys already know this because I kind of mention it in every single video that I do. So I'm going to build the scene around the sentiment. I started with the sentiment because when I build these type of scenes, I get carried away and I forget to leave room for a sentiment. So I will if I just build a scene and don't do a sentiment, I then need to add a sentiment as another layer onto my uh, onto my card, you know, as a die cut. And I didn't want to do that. I wanted the sentiment on the background. So that's why I did the sentiment first. And then I'm adding my die cuts around it. So I've added the hummingbird and I'm adding my lilies. And this is what I mean. You know, these lilies are very large. They're so large that they don't really fit in the rest of the space that I have here. So it is good to have smaller filler flowers to fill the background in and those little flower buds, they just work perfectly here.
I'm also adding extra leaves, you know, here and there. And before I do that, I'm ink blending them using the Simon Says Stamp Perfection ink to, you know, give them some darker green at the base of the leaves. I trimmed the petals of the large lilies, the petals that were going outside the edge of the panel, and now I'm using those leftover petals to fill the gaps that I still have on my background. And I love doing this. You know, I'm not wasting cardstock. I'm not throwing the leftover petals away. I'm reusing them, and this creates the illusion that this uh, pattern, that this image is trimmed from a larger sheet. So I love to create these uh, continuous patterns, sort of patterns that flow over the edge of my card. So we have a dark green background with a simple gold foiled sentiment and bold, bright flowers and hummingbird around it, and I just love it. If you were to do this same type of arrangement, this same card on a white background, it would look totally different. It would not have quite of a dramatic effect as this dark background creates, as this dark background adds. You can test it, actually. You can, you know, you can uh, have a bunch of die cuts, plan them on a white background, take a picture and then plan the same about uh, the same die cuts on a dark background. Take another picture and compare the two pictures and you'll see how huge of a difference a dark background makes. For my next card, I wanted to create the look of hummingbird fluttering in the sky in the clouds. So I used a cloud die from Spellbinders. This is the color block cloudscape die set. I have had this set for a very long time. I've actually asked Spellbinders for this set to, you know, design this set as it is wonderful for backgrounds and scenes. And then I never had the chance, the, the time to use it. So I'm finally using it here to make this cloud background for my hummingbird. I die cut the cloud layers from various colors of cardstock from my stash. I don't remember the exact colors, but I think I used the following. The Simon Says Stamp Sea Glass, Spellbinders Waterfall, Simon Says Stamp Audrey Blue, and Spellbinders Teal Topaz. And the background here is the Spellbinders Blue Spruce. Baby's Hummingbirds collection includes a stamp set with sentiments, and she has some really great and thoughtful messages in this set. I picked the sentiment that reads, just flying by to say hi, and I stamped this in onyx black ink. I used my mini misty stamping tool, and I stamped it onto the bottom cloud. The other sentiments in this set read, always here for you. Your kindness means everything. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. May the wind always be at your back and the sun upon your face. That is one beautiful sentiment. And there are other sentiments too. I'm not going to read them all. You can see them on the website. So next, I played a little bit with the cloud placement until I had the clouds positioned the way that I wanted. And I taped the pieces together with the Spellbinders Best Ever Craft Tape. I love this tape. It is absolutely perfect. It comes in three different sizes. So this is the regular width. There's also the narrow tape and the wide tape. This tape is very low tack and it doesn't tear your paper. Still, sometimes I like to stick it to my hand to first remove the stickiness. But this tape has never let me down once. Okay, maybe once when I was doing the die cutting and the pressure from my machine really pressed the tape into the paper. But other than that, this tape is absolutely fantastic and I use it all the time. Okay, next I have two different foam square thicknesses. So I have one millimeter thickness and I call these thin foam adhesive squares and I have the regular thickness foam squares. I'm going to combine both, to use both, to adhere these cloud layers, to have different levels of height on my card. And you can see that the thin squares are twice thinner compared to the regular thickness squares. I also used tape uh, for the bottom two layers of my clouds so that this card did not become super thick and super dimensional. So it has a little bit of dimension, still it's not two dimensional. I adhered my panel, this is the blue spruce, to an A2 tub folding card base. Now I do have a white gap at the bottom of my panel. The panel does not go all the way down. And that's just a piece of paper that I had, the size of the paper that I had. It's not going to actually serve any purpose on the finished card as the bottom is going to be covered with a cloud die cuts. 
So it is there, but it's not going to be there on the finished card. And I'm ink blending this panel using the Simon Says Stamp Galaxy ink to darken up the edges a little bit. And again, this will um, create sort of like a frame around my hummingbird and it will direct the eye of the viewer to the center of the card to that colorful hummingbird. I added the colorful hummingbird die cut. I added some pearls to this card. You know, I scattered them around the clouds and I love the result. I also used my shimmer pen and I added shimmer to the wings of my birds. I did that for all of my cards and this is the Nuvo Glitter Gloss pen. You can use any shimmer pen that you have in your stash. Just add a little bit of shimmer to the wings, just a little bit of sparkle. Now there's also another die in this set, the Hummingbird Card Creator. This is a huge die. I did not make a card using this die. This die is geared more towards the five by seven cards. It is pretty huge. And the five by seven card cards, they're just not my thing. I find that size to be a little bit too big. I find it intimidating, you know, uh, but I still wanted to show you this die and I still wanted to, you to see how beautiful it is. It has all of the layers and you can create a shaped card base using it. And you can again, build your hummingbird using different colors of cardstock. And it has all of that texture and detail. It is a stunning die if you are into larger size cards. So here's a look at the cards I have for you today. I didn't show you how I made the fourth card, the one on the purple background, and that purple is the Spellbinders Plum, but I did make it in the same way as I did the other cards. Now I added another hummingbird here, so I have two hummingbirds on this card, and this other hummingbird, the one that's facing the other direction, is from the pop-up hummingbird die set. And that set is another very clever set, but it is designed for pop-up cards. I didn't use it as intended, but I did like the hummingbird that is facing the other way in this set so that I can have, you know, one hummingbird facing right and the other one is facing left. So it adds, you know, it adds variety, variety to my cards. I do have intentions to use the pop-up set as intended, but do I have time? I don't know. I have it written down on my to-do list and maybe one day I will have time and maybe I will make a card and a video using it but I might not. I don't know. You guys see how far behind I am. So that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. I loved making these cards. I loved using the dark cardstock for these backgrounds. And I do do that a lot. I just wanted to, you know, give you a video, show you how you can play with different colors of cardstock and how that dark color of cardstock helps the other colors that you use in your card pop. Thanks for spending time with me today. Love you guys. And I'll be back soon.